Hmm. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do the Math. I'm Michael. I'm Cece. And I'm Rashawn. For math homework help, call in Bakersfield, 636-4357. Anywhere else, call 1-866-636-6284. Email dothemath at kern.org. We're online at dothemathonline.net and on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, nicely done. So, Rashawn, where do you go to school and what grade are you in? I go to Ronald Reagan and I'm in sixth grade. How is sixth grade? It's good. Yeah? What's so good mm -hmm. about it? Um, I got a good teacher this year. Oh, good. Yeah. good. Well, you see them every day, right? So it's a good yeah. thing you've got a good instructor. Mm -hmm. Is there anything... Have you been at Reagan for a long time? Yeah, since second grade. Since second grade. So you've been there a yeah. while. What do you think you'll miss the most? Because you have to leave next year. What do you, what do you think you'll miss the um, most? Probably all the friends I've made there. Okay. Well, yeah. some, I'm sure, will go to junior high with you. Yeah. But then you have an opportunity to make even more friends, right? Yeah. All right, good. Well, I'm glad sixth grade is going well for you so far this year. What kinds of things have you, you been doing in math that you can remember this year? So, we've been doing, we've been working on fractions and decimals. Okay, good. Yeah. And you feel pretty comfortable with those? Yeah. Do you remember when you did those in fifth grade? Yeah. Do you know when you're going to do them again? Um, seventh grade? Probably? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, in seventh grade. Guess when you're going to do them after that? Ninth grade? You're going to do them in eighth grade, too. Yeah. Right. And then you're going to yeah. do them in ninth grade. Yeah. And then when? 10th grade. And then? 11th. And then? 12th. Yeah. And then? 13th. Yeah, wherever you go, to, if you go to school or you go to work or you continue doing whatever you're going to do, right? Yeah. You're going to be doing fractionals, fraction, fractionals. <laughs> that sounds like putting all of them together, fractions, decimals, and percents, right? But you're going to be doing all of those things for the rest of your life. Yeah. So once you get comfortable with them, even better. Mm -hmm. You ready to help me out with a math problem of the day? Yep. All right, let's take a look at it right now. Okay. So here it is. It says solve this problem. Four ninths times one third. So Rashawn, when you see that, what is what comes into your mind? What do you think we should do first? So we have to multiply the numerators together, then multiply the denominators. What are numerators for students that don't know what you're talking about? So the numerators are the like the amount you have out of how much you can have. Okay, so would that be the four or the nine? The four. Okay, so the four. So the number on top is the numerator. Yeah. All right. So you said multiply the numerators? Yeah. So I would get four. Yeah. And then what do I do? And then multiply nine times three, which and is 27. So I've heard with fractions you have to simplify them, correct? Yeah. Is there a way to simplify this? No. You're positive? Yes. Really positive? Yes. All right. So there's no way to simplify it. Mm-hmm. So what do you think the answer is? Four twenty-sevenths. So you're going with A? Yes. No doubt. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look, see if A is indeed correct. There you go, nicely done. First problem done. That was a pretty easy one, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, we didn't have to simplify. There was no mixed mm -hmm. numbers or anything like that. All right, have you ever been to Holiday Lights at Com? Oh, yeah. Yes, I have. Oh, you have? Yeah. Well, guess what? You know what? We have free tickets to Holiday Lights at Com right now for any students that phone in. Did you know that? Mm. Let's take a look at the screen right now. We have a little bit of footage right here. Mm -hmm. This is some of the footage of Holiday Lights at Com. This is what is going on this year. For the past couple of years, they've had it where it was a drive through but now you can walk through Com once again. And as always, they've got some new displays, as well as some old favorites right there. And you, uh, have you ever gone on the train out there? Yeah. yeah all right, well, they've got the train right out. There it is right there. Nice timing. All right, so Holiday Lights at Com is coming up. There are some activities out there. They've got some goodies to eat and drink. It's happening right now, started a couple of days ago. We'll go all the way through December 30th. There we go, December 30th, it goes all the way through. 
And uh, who knows, maybe you and your family have an opportunity to go to Holiday Lights again. Yeah. Would you like that? Mm -hmm. Not too bad, huh? All right. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Time now for today's Math in the News. All right, today's Math in the News. We are fortunate enough to have a repeat guest. How are you, Doc? I'm very good. Nice to see Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me back. So Roy Lefevre mm -hmm. in studio with us, a chemistry professor from CSUB. Now, you are a chemistry professor at Cal State Bakersfield, but you are my pepper expert also. I've been working with peppers for a number of years. That's right, and, and I know that we've had some projects in the past we've worked on, mm -hmm. and whenever we need to know anything about peppers, you are the person to go to. Okay. Do you, I, I don't even know if we ever talked about this, do you enjoy hot peppers? I, I, I do, but I, I really limit myself. I, the real hot ones, I'll just take a small amount. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll just take a small amount. I don't want to destroy overwhelm. everything. Yeah, you can, you can destroy a dish with too much pepper. If somebody said, here's a couple of jalapenos whole, would you just eat those and you have no problem? No, that's too much for me. That's too much. How too about much. pepperoncinis? Too much. Pepperoncinis, I'll eat a few. Okay. Pepperoncinis. But sometimes there's some pepperoncinis that are hot. They'll, they'll actually surprise you. Well, speaking of hot, let's go mm -hmm. into the Scoville scale sure. right here. Then sure. This is what you've got. So tell us a little bit about this, how it developed and what these numbers mean. Yeah, so, I mean, we came here. We're going to talk about pep, uh, Pepper X, which is this new pepper right. that has a Scoville number, which is uh, north of 3 million. And so I thought I'd talk about Scoville and the Scoville scale. Scoville was a pharmacist, and pharmacists, they want to quantify dosages of things. And this was back before we had modern laboratories, modern instruments. He developed a taste test to establish the level of hotness for peppers. And so what they did was they'd make a puree of a pepper. He'd have a panel of people that would taste it. They would do dilutions. So if, if I do a one to two dilution, I take one volume of the pepper and one volume of water and I mix them, that's a one to two dilution. Okay. They would do one to million dilutions and they would have the panel of people taste these samples until they detected this molecule, capsaicin, which is the And that's what molecule. they're looking for, that taste and that heat. That's right, and so that dilution number, that's what we see with the Scoville scale. So something that has a Scoville number of a million it took a one to one million dilution for that to, to be okay. detected. And we can okay. see that the first thing that we get to when we're talking about a million is we're talking up here this uh, uh, Naga Jalokia, Naga? Okay. ghost peppers. Yeah. So that's the ghost pepper that a yeah, lot of people are right. familiar yeah. with. That's right. This, this slide is probably 10 years old before Pepper X and before Carolina Reaper. And actually, both of those peppers were developed by the same pepper breeder, a guy by the name of Ed Curry in South Carolina. Just wants to make heat. Yes, that's right. All right. Which, perfect last name. So this is, <laughs> yeah. this is that scale with some illustrations of the various peppers. You can see Pepper X all the way there at the end. It has a Scoville number of about That's a nice name on the million. one before, though, Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath, yeah, you know. that's two and a half million. But, the, the top one and the third one, Carolina Reaper and Pepper X, are all from the same farm in South Carolina, this, this Ed Curry. Okay. And the cayenne pepper, which a lot of people probably don't eat like that, but have it in a ground form. Absolutely. And chili and a variety right, of things. Right. Something that people probably eat more of this than they may realize yeah. Yeah. without eating the pepper raw, let's say. That's right. So I just wanted to show you, you know, nowadays we don't rely on this panel of taste testers. We, in the laboratory, we make this puree of the peppers. We have instruments, and, and this shows an analysis of, of these, the two major heat substances in peppers, capsaicin, dihydrocapsaicin. Now, going back for a moment, we were talking about taste testers back, you know, a little after the Civil War when this guy started doing this with these people. Mm -hmm. How do you think they selected these people because do you think they did an equal number of males and females, age groups, people that normally eat? That's a good kind question. Of things, I, you know I, what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah. how are we going to start yeah. this? Yeah. You know, you've got to have a base. It, it's a good question. I suspect he, he got a panel of 
sort of random people and and gave it a try. Okay. You know, maybe he found some better testers Modify along the way. Modify after a while. You're yeah. out. You know, <laughs> that's right. You, you can eat anything. Yeah, that's right. Bother you. Yeah. Okay. I, and there is some variation from one individual to the next on how this heat affects you. So, I mean, that's right, a good question. Right, because some people eat this stuff all the time and that's it doesn't right. bother them. And some people would just put it up by their face and they start sweating. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is the modern day. The modern technique. We don't have to rely on those differences between individuals. Now, this is the interesting part because yeah. this is where if you want to get right to the basics, right? Where does right. the heat come from? Right. That's what we're going to look at. And, and I think that the idea I'm going to describe here kind of explains the tremendous heat that you see in Pepper X. This, there's two peppers here that are shown images on the right. One is a bell pepper on the bottom. It's has no capsaicin. The other one is jalapeno up above. Those are blisters where these compounds are produced. And this is all done in the internal structures of these fruits. You can see in the jalapeno, you can see the yellow deposition of right. capsaicin material. Um, in Pepper X, the, the, the feature about Pepper X is it has a very convoluted surface area, both internally and externally. So these vesicles that you see that are producing these compounds, there's a lot more of them in Pepper X. I think if you move forward, um, ah, before we get to showing some Pepper X, how you cross these things is actually relatively simple. Humans have been doing it for a couple of hundred years. You remove the anthers from one flower and you take and you take the pollen and you paint it onto another plant, onto the stamen, and then you put a bag over that so that no other pollen can right, get in Right, and we'll take that. a look at this right yeah. now. So here are the so different the, parts. Yeah, the anthers are the bees, big purple structures and you just remove those. Be peppers will self-pollinate. You do it early on in the, in the flower development and they won't self-pollinate. And then you can paint whatever pollen you want on the, on the uh, stamen. After you get done with that, you bag them so that there's not the possibility of any other cross-pollination. And we can see the peppers there, but we're going to go back to the different parts of the pepper now. Ah, okay. And once again, this, because a lot of people are familiar with this, but it's probably need to bring up the point that whenever you handle peppers, whatever degree of heat they are, you need to clean your hands. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of times people yeah. forget they'll be cutting peppers, right? And then they'll, you know, wipe their eye or something, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden their eyes start burning. Yeah. Because this stuff is now spreading to whatever else you're yeah. going to touch. Yeah. And for the most part, you're not going to find capsaicin on the exterior of the pepper. It's, it's all on the inside. It's all synthesized in this central piece of tissue that's known as the placenta. That's where seed development occurs. There's this idea that you get the heat from the seeds. Right, that's, I was going to say, because people have that notion, let's yeah. say. Or, and it's not really true. I mean, the seeds are produced in close proximity to where the capsaicin is being produced. So, I mean, there is some truth to it, but there's generally not capsaicin on the, the pepper seeds. And, and this is Pepper X, and this is what I wanted to illustrate with these images, this this highly convoluted structure of the, the, the surface of the pepper is also in the interior. Right, because it looks kind of ugly, mm -hmm. right, compared yeah. to other peppers, you know. But that lends to more surface area that you were talking about. Exactly, exactly. Both internal and, uh, and external, there's, there's greater surface area. So when Carolina Reaper was produced, there were some biochemists who were suggesting we're not going to get a hotter pepper than this. They weren't anticipating a change in morphology of the pepper anatomy. And to where this could just be the beginning of something brand new also, right? It's like, be. oh, this is simply a mild pepper now. For yeah. Five years from now, That's somebody right. comes out with something else. That's so you're right. not a big fan of peppers yourself. You enjoy the taste, let's say, mm -hmm. and how it adds something to a dish. Uh, there are a lot of people that go, if I do eat one of these foolishly, and it affects me deeply. Like, I mean, you, you can't speak, you're having oh, trouble yeah. breathing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. What is the best way for a person to go about relieving themselves? I know that people talk about milk, butter, fats, things like that. Yeah, I, I think ice cream. I love ice cream and it, it satisfies, it, 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 it's the cooling sensation plus the fats that are in the ice cream help 
wash that capsaicin away. And I remember them. people going, oh, you know what, drink water. All that does is spread it That's throughout right. you more, right? Yeah, water like, oh, doesn't drink water. help. Let me spread it throughout the rest of my throat and everything else I have going on right there. Water does not help. Anyway, anything else about it? Uh, so do you grow hot peppers yourself? I do. In fact, um, I usually grow a half a dozen different varieties of year a year. This year, I really focused on Tabasco. I've made a bunch of Tabasco sauce. I, I enjoy Tabasco sauce. It's okay. kind of medium level in that Scoville index. And we at Do The Math enjoy Tabasco sauce also, oh, you do? guys. So if you want to uh, bring some down sometime, we'd be more than happy to sample a little bit of that Tabasco that. sauce and uh, be one of the uh, taste testers from back in the nope. 1800s right there. I'm so sorry I didn't bring, bring any this time. <laughs> Doc, thanks for coming yeah. in today. Thank nice you to for see having you me. again. 636-4357 is that phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Time now to check out our friends Curtis with the Bakersfield Museum of Art. We know we have a lot of math to do. I'll do the math. But who knew? Maybe some of you did know. Art has a lot to do with math. Music has a lot to do with math. That's why we try to show those features here on Do the Math. Today, I brought my friend Curtis from the Museum of Art, Bakersfield Hi. Museum of Art. Going to do some math here yeah, with you. these young folks and tell us a little bit about what we're doing today. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me back. Today, we're going to be making right. some Trinky Dinks. Um, those of you who have never... Uh, old school. Old school, yeah. yeah. If you uh, have heard of Trinky Dinks, great. If you have not, from, uh, this is kind of a really cool yeah. art project where you take some plasticized paper and applying heat, you take the original image and shrink it down. And that's going to help us take a look at um, scale as well as the percentages of the reduction of the scale. So it'll be kind of interesting to figure that out. That will be kind a of cool. experiment. Yeah. yeah. So they can do some art projects of their own, mm -hmm. draw whatever they want to, and then we're just going to make sure it goes from bigger to smaller. Yes. And when that happens, of course, there's some science involved in there too, course, right? We yeah. have this, the plastic shrinking and the, mm -hmm. what the chemicals and the molecules are doing there. Uh, but what we're concerned most about today is or interested anyway, mm -hmm. most about today is how much did it shrink? People exactly. say, oh, it's about half the size, but we want to know, put some numbers yeah, with it, yeah. right? Yeah, what do we think it's going to uh, shrink down to versus what it actually shrinks down to? I think yeah, that'll yeah. be fun to figure out. So as I go through a couple of questions in my mind, can you give us a little preview about what's happening? When we go to shrink things, mm -hmm. do things get smaller the more heat we apply or the longer we apply it or a combination of the two? It's a combination of the two and what is more important is the consistency of the heat. Okay. So we oh, okay. pretty much just want to have the heat going on evenly over the uh, the shrinky dink so that it has a nice even heat and that way it's a good reference from the original image versus the new image right. to figure out that. So we don't want to burn a hole like in one side of Santa's head or something like Definitely that. Definitely not. Work out yeah. right. Right. We're going to do our best not to burn anything today. Right. Okay. So, uh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> we have a plan in place. That's We've good. Got a plan. We're going to get started on this art project and I'm sure we'll be able to check back in just a little bit. I'm sure there's also some more math to do back at the studio. Always more math to do. Thanks to you, Curtis and Scott, as well, as well as all of the kids down there getting ready to do that art project. In studio, we have Rashawn, sixth grade student from Reagan. Going to miss a couple of your friends next year, but you'll have a lot of them going with you, right? Mm -hmm. You ready to do a math problem? Yeah. All right, head on over to the board. This is one of your math problems you have for homework. So, CC, maybe if you just write it, right. we'll start on the far left because it's kind of a lengthy equation. All right, go for it. Three, open parentheses, one plus x close parentheses is equal to two, open a bracket, three, open parentheses, x plus two, close parentheses, minus, open parentheses, x plus one, close parentheses, close the bracket. I get it. That's it. Fabulous. Okay, it's all you. Okay, so first you would um, distribute this over, so it would be Three. Sorry. Uh. Yep. Okay. Plus three x. Okay. Good. Just remind us what it means. You said distribute. What does that mean? So it's basically bringing this over to both of them. Okay. Wh when you say bring, what operation are you doing? Multiply. Absolutely nice. Okay, so when we have that three right up against that parentheses, we know that it's multiplication. So you have to multiply to each thing. Very good. All right, I like it. So then. So wait, the why why aren't here. you multiplying the two through then? Because it, we're not uh, you have to do inside of the 
brackets and parentheses first. Ah, okay, from the inside out, very good. So you would do the same thing here. Okay. Where it would be 3x plus 6. Then this would go to negative x. That would, would that make it negative 1? I don't, why, why do you think so? Why, why are you thinking because that? Because you're basically multiplying it. This kind of means a negative 1. Okay. And then a negative times a positive would make it negative. Okay, good. So there's a couple of ways to think about it. You're exactly right. We know that the number out in front of here is 1, so it could be plus negative 1, just like you're saying. Yeah. The other thing we can think of is that, that if I went back, let me go um, take away what I just did. If we think about this, we're saying we're going to subtract everything that's in here. So I'm going to subtract the x, and I also need to subtract the 1. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice one. So then you can see. So, so far you've worked within the brackets. Are we done inside yeah. our brackets? Um, no. What can we do inside our brackets? Think. Let's see. We could add one here and here. So not quite yet because we still need, we still have this two out here that's going to trouble me with everything in the brackets. Let's okay. just look just inside our brackets and tell me what kind of things we can do in there. We have three x's here. I have a minus x over here. Okay. What can we do with that? Could you subtract six, uh, put, subtract one from the six? Right, yeah. Well, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do com combining, what we call the combining like terms, yeah. right? I've got, I've got three x's. I'm going to subtract an x, which gives yeah. me what? Okay. Two x. Fabulous. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Plus five. Nice. Okay, good. So that's the inside of my brackets. Okay, you lost one thing when you did that. So you did the inside of the brackets. What got lost oh, on this side? Mine. So this inside of the brackets was done. What, what did we do? This? Oh, yeah, the two. Okay. There you go. Okay, what are we going to do with that? Okay, nice. Then this would make it, yeah, 4x mm -hmm. plus 10. Okay. Okay, so now what? You can subtract 3x from here. Okay, so why? What are you trying to do? So you have to get all the numbers on one side and all of the letters on the other. Good, because why? We're really trying to say what does 1x equal? Yeah. I don't care about all the 3s and 4s and all that. I want to get mm -hmm. to down to 1. Okay, good. I like it. And if we do that on one side in order to keep it balanced with that equal sign, we have to do it to the other side. Yeah. So that would just make it x plus and these would cancel out. So when you say cancel, do they really just kind of magically cancel each other? What's actually no. happening there? So if you have the 3x and you're subtracting 3x, that would make it 0x. Okay, good. And we don't need to show that. Excellent. Then you can subtract 10, which does this minus Right, 10 what we do to one side, we do to the other. Negative 7 equals x. Nicely done. Okay, so we think that's our answer. We're pretty confident yeah. that our answer? Yeah. What would we do? I don't know if we have enough time. Well, we're going to have him check it while we go to break. Ah, okay. So he can check that, but nicely okay. done on that negative 7. So for your great effort so far today, Rashawn, you've got yourself a pass to any sporting activity, courtesy of CSUB Athletics, so congratulations on that. And speaking of other math, let's talk some math right now. Hi, my name's Holly, and today I'm going to talk about should 0.9 with a bar notation over it be considered 1. So we have two sides, and we're going to talk about side 1 first, that it's not equal to 1. So in the decimal world, 0 0.9 with bar notation is as close as you can get to 1 without being equal to 1. And it's just going to keep getting closer and closer to 1, but it's never actually going to quite grasp it. And then in the percent world, 100% is the total, right? And percent means per 100. So technically, 100% is equal to 1 and not 0 0.9 with a bar notation. 
Then we have side two, it is equal to one. In the fraction world, three thirds is equal to one, right? Well, here's another thing. When you convert three thirds to a decimal, you get three, you get 0 0.9 with the bar notation over it, right? But when you convert one third to a decimal, you get 0 0.3 with a bar notation over it. And when you multiply that by three, you get the same number. And when you convert one nine to a decimal, you get 0 0.1. And when you multiply that times nine, you get, guess what? The same number. So what do you think? Side one or side two? Thanks for watching. All right, there we go, talking a little bit of math with some of our math student experts right there. We have Rashawn in studio, a sixth grade student from Reagan Elementary working on equations. And now the important part that a lot of students don't take all of the time to do necessarily, and then they go, well, how did I get it wrong? Well, you didn't check it because if you checked it, you would have known you would have had it wrong and then you could do something to modify it. So why don't you guys go through that real quick? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of this top part just so that we have some space. Okay, so that's gone. Um, let me go ahead. I'm going to put in that negative 7. So we've got 3 times 1 plus negative 7 is equal to 2. 3 times negative 7 plus 2. Negative 7 plus 1. Okay, we got that. And actually, we'll go ahead and we can get rid of all this. Okay. All right. Do some magic. Okay. So, over on this side, okay. you can, so negative 7 plus 2 would make it negative 5. Okay. 2, 3, 5. So, a negative times a negative would make it positive, so positive seven, and then that would still be the same, so negative one. Okay, so there's something that happened right here. You brought down the three and you brought down the negative five. Is it three minus five right here? Okay. No. Okay. It still has to be in the parentheses. What are we multiplying the three to? We're multiplying the three to? Negative five. To the negative five. So make sure that we're just showing the three is being multiplied to the negative five. There you yeah. go. Okay, nice. I like it. Uh, now, careful with your, I'm going to back you off of those. Okay. Just because that's going to show me, if my parentheses are right next to each other, that's going to show me that multiplication, multiplication, and I don't want okay. that yet. Mm -hmm. So we can just leave that alone. You multiplied that through, we're good. So then it would be, yeah. Um, so the one so plus negative one seven. One plus negative seven. So one, would it be? But it's positive negative seven. Mm -hmm. Would that still be negative seven? So, so you're, we're not multiplying. We're saying we've got a, we've got like if I have one dollar, yeah. and then I owe somebody seven dollars. Oh, okay. So, so negative six. There you go. I okay. like it. One minus six would make it negative five. Uh, no, 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 no. We did that. So the one plus negative seven is going to give me negative six. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good. That would still be in parentheses because mm -hmm. you're multiplying. Good. So then 3 times negative 6 would make it negative 18. Good. Two, okay. So, so let's do our order of operations. So let's keep yeah. our 2 on the outside and go ahead and work in the inside. Then 3 times negative, fifth, negative 5 would make it negative 15. Perfect. So plus seven minus one, you could go ahead and write that in six. there. Are we sure? Positive seven. Okay, never mind. Positive six. Nice. Okay, um, and that's gonna close off our bracket, right? That's that's everything. Okay, what do we have next? So we have to distribute these. The order of operation tells us that let's go ahead and just keep oh, yeah, inside okay, our sure. bracket, right? So then that make it negative nine? Mm-hmm. Good. Two four. Is that true? Yeah. 
If you go, well, go ahead and finish your go ahead so, and finish your uh, multiplication then. Negative eighteen over there. Mm-hmm. Equals negative eighteen. So is that true? Yes. Yes. Nicely done. I like it. Good job. See, and that's important that you guys go through that because there were some times when he was like, oh, the one and negative seven mm -hmm. does kind of bring you back to expressions and working with positive right. and negative integers, right? Mm -hmm. Right. To make sure you stay on that. So yeah. nicely done. That way you can always verify and see what your grade would be, for example, on your homework yeah. before you turn it in because you can go, oh, I did it. I checked it and it does work. All right. Let's head downstairs and we can take a look at what those guys are doing right now. This is with uh, Curtis from the Bakersfield Museum of Art, and we can see the kids right now tracing their uh, photos, their drawings, and what they're going to do is they're going to be looking at the scale and the percent that these get smaller once they apply a bit of heat to them. So they're little shrinky dinks. And uh, so CC. I know last time you were around, we were talking yeah. about stuff that happened a long time ago. Yep, you're like, yep, oh, you guys yep. are a little older. Yeah, yeah. So do you I, remember I, Shrinky oh, Dinks, though? Of course I do. All right. I yes. just wanted to make sure. I didn't know if this was something. I'm not new. that young. <laughs> I definitely remember those. So do you remember any, did you do it like during the holidays or was it a uh, so all the time activity um, kind of? Or? I would say we probably did them around the holidays more often than we did just kind of normally. They might have been like a summer thing we may have done just for fun, but I, I do remember doing them at Christmas. Yeah, I do remember because sure. it would be like, all right, make yeah. an ornament or something Yeah, oh, like absolutely. That. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, was it. Yeah, right it would there. end up round and you'd kind of punch, stop, punch a hole in it. and Put a little piece of ribbon through yeah, it. Absolutely, and take it home and... Do the uh, scissor, you know, curl yeah, it at yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, you're, so, good, to, you're good to go and it's like, yay, Merry Christmas, Mom. All right, 636-4357 is that phone number. We do have phone tutors most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Just a programming note, next week will be the final week of live broadcasting for the year 2023 for Do the Math. But in studio we have Rashawn, and uh, you ready for another math problem? Yeah. Let's do one a little shorter this time, all right? Okay. So that was the last one on your homework, so let's do the first one on your homework, all right? So here we go, five. Open parentheses, x plus 3, close parentheses, minus 2x is equal to negative 21. All right. Go crazy. Okay. So you'd have to distribute this. 5x plus 15. Good. You multiplied that nicely. Minus 2x equals negative 21. So why didn't you multiply the 5 to the negative 2x out here? Because it's not in the parentheses. Okay. These are um, next to each other, so that means multiply, but okay. this one isn't. Okay, so we're multiplying only to that which is in the parentheses. Yes. Very good. Okay, I like it. So then you can um, combine like terms. Okay. So then that would make it 3x. Okay, and so I'm going to pause you just one more time. When we say combine like terms, what did you actually just do? So. I subtracted 2x from 5x. Okay, because we had a positive here and a negative 2, so combined together we've got yeah. the 3x. Okay, good. Plus 15 equals negative 21. Mm -hmm. Then you can subtract 15. Mm -hmm. So that 15 minus 15 is 0. Mm -hmm. 3x equals. So what you Six. do to one, one side, you have, you have to, to do to the, the other. other okay, so go ahead and show me that. Okay, so now I'm a little concerned about that being negative 6. Because we've got negative 21 minus oh, yeah, 15. Okay. 36. Okay. Negative 36. Okay. So then you'd have to divide it by 3. Mm -hmm. 3x divided by 3 is just 1x. Okay. So then 36 divided by 3 is 12, negative 12. Okay, so we have x is equal to negative 12. All yeah. right, so if I were to go back and check this, could we check this pretty quickly, you think? Yeah. Okay. Talk me through it. Okay. Go ahead. So should I erase this? Um, why don't we just kind of do it off to the side, maybe? Okay.
Yeah, don't worry about squeezing the negative 21 because we know what that is. Yeah, we know so that So just put one. your minus 2 and then put negative 12 in parentheses. There you go, and just Good. go from there. Okay. So this is in the parentheses, so you have to do this first. Okay. Negative 12 plus 3 mm -hmm. would make it negative 9. Lovely. It still has to stay in the parentheses because you're adding it to 5, Good. or multiplying it to 5. Then negative 2 times negative 12 would make it positive 24. Good. 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. Mm -hmm. Plus 24. So then that would make it 24. So what are you doing in your head right now? 21. What, were, what operation were you doing? Addition. So you're doing addition, but you're kind of doing what? I mean, um, it, in order to get 21 from here, we're not adding it because that would be 69, right? So what are you yeah. kind of actually doing? Subtracting. Why? Because... It's uh, a positive, so that brings it up. Okay, good. From the negative 45. Yeah. Nicely done. So, yeah, so we're looking for that difference. 21. And was that our answer originally? No. Well, that our well, he's X, value. At the X value. X oh, value. What about okay. up here? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. There you yeah. go. Good. So, we checked right, it. Yeah, we're good. Make to go. sure you're looking at the right thing. There you nice. go. Nice. So, negative 21 is good. To negative 21. Nicely done. All right, we'll get back to more, but first we'll check out what's going on this week at NASA. In search of cleaner fuel for aviation, a scientific balloon campaign in Antarctica, and a key engine test for our Artemis moon rocket. A few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. NASA and Boeing partnered recently to conduct a contrail research campaign. During the campaign, NASA's DC-8 Flying Science Laboratory measured emissions in contrail ice formations from a Boeing Eco Demonstrator aircraft as the Boeing plane switched between 100% sustainable aviation fuel and a low sulfur version of conventional jet fuel. Data collected will help determine whether sustainable aviation fuels help reduce the formation of contrails, which may trap heat in the atmosphere. The scientific balloon flights planned during NASA's annual Antarctic Long Duration Balloon Campaign include the GUSTO mission. This astrophysics mission is aiming for a record 55-plus day flight in the skies above the southernmost hemisphere. It will map a large part of the Milky Way galaxy, including the galactic center and the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud. Learn more about NASA's scientific balloon program at nasa.gov slash scientific balloons. On November 29th, our Stennis Space Center conducted a hot fire test of an RS-25 engine. Crews gimbaled or pivoted the RS-25 around a central point during the test. Gimbaling is a key capability for the engine that is used to stabilize the Space Launch System, or SLS rocket, during flight on Artemis missions to the moon and beyond. This was the third hot fire in the current 12 test certification series. 70 teams representing 24 states in Puerto Rico were selected to compete in the 2024 Student Launch Challenge. The nine-month-long competition, which requires students to design, build, and fly a high-powered amateur rocket in scientific payload, culminates with final events April 10th through 14th, 2024, near our Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more about what else we're up to, check out nasa.gov. Always fun and exciting things going on every single week at NASA. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30. Just a reminder, you phone in to do the math. We do one of your math problems. You will get yourself a pass to go to Holiday Lights at Com. Right now, we're going to go back downstairs, visit with Curtis and the Museum of Art, and check in with Scott. All right. Hey, we're back. we got a little bit of art going today on Do the Math. And it's a busy place. We've got some pencils flying. We've got some plastic to shrink. Oh, right, yes, Chris? absolutely. Right. So we talked a little bit about the beginning, what mm -hmm. we're going to do here. 
we're making a full size uh, full size drawing. In other words, like a you know making a drawing on a piece of plastic, mm -hmm, and then we're going to take that actual thing and shrink it down. Correct. Right? We're going to apply some heat, and gotcha. it should shrink down in a real in a fairly uh, even manner. Okay. Now we have one of our student assistants over here who has completed her uh, first shrinky dink for the evening. Gotcha. Important and part that we want to do before we shrink, right? Mm -hmm. Important is write down a couple of measurements here. Yes. So we she measured from the top to the bottom of the plastic left to the right of the plastic. And the reason is because we want to do a little bit of math at the end. Correct. Probably yes. with a calculator, but that's all right. We'll take yeah, it. We'll see how right? it goes. Yeah. But measure that before it starts to shrink, because that's the whole deal. Correct. It's going to get smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we hope. How does it get smaller? That's what everyone wants to see. How does it Science. Work? Okay. Let's see it. <laughs> so, okay. We're going to use our heating element, which is just kind of like, this is kind of like a fancy hair dryer, essentially. <laughs> it's just going to shoot some uh, hot air. And we're just going to be pointing this on top of our little plate. I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to hold this, and it should start shrinking up here in, oh, probably a minute, minute 30 seconds. So the heat is just applied directly on uh -huh. there, right? You can see it's starting to uh -oh. shrink up a little bit. We're going to see it kind so of... So do not be alarmed. We're going to have a little bit of contortion first. Yeah. This is okay. normal. This is a normal thing. This is a normal thing. <laughs> Nobody panic. The interesting part to me that I remember about shrinking inks, and it looks like it's happening here as well, right? is that as it shrinks, the plastic becomes a little more see-through, becomes, becomes a little more opaque, right? Correct. It's kind of interesting because it had a rough surface initially to be able to hold on to the color as the student drop, drew a picture. Mm -hmm. But as it shrinks, it becomes a little more see-through. Almost looks like, you know, clear plastic, like a glass type of thing. Yeah, It absolutely. makes it kind of a neat ornament. I, I understand why you did that. That's kind of, kind of cool. Now, something that we did forget to do was punch a hole at the top of it. Oh, we gotcha. can still do that later That's on. That's right. We'll it's get okay. the old drill out, and we'll That's make sure right. it has a hole at the end. That's my bad. <laughs> I just got super excited to start shrinking stuff. <laughs> well, there's more to shrink after there this, we so we won't forget next time. And but it's interesting how it all shriveled up together, mm -hmm. right? And then it became flat again. Yeah. So maybe the student here is thinking, oh, my gosh, you're going to make a big, a big ball of plastic mush and... But that's not the way it's going. It's, yeah. it's coming right back out, like kind of like it should be. One looks like it's about done. So we nice. can go ahead and turn this off. It's still going to be a, bit, a little bit warm, so we just want to give it a, a second to cool off. Right. And then when this does cool off, we're going to take uh, new measurements and we're going to compare those to the original measurements and right. see how big of a difference this is. Now, how how much of a difference percentage-wise do you think this shrank by mm -hmm. compared to the original? Maybe. 30, 40 percent? 30, 40 I think that's a pretty healthy. I think it shrank by as much as 65 percent. Wow. That's going to be my guess. Okay. That would be interesting to find, kind of find out. What about you, Scott? What is there, well, my first question is, because I'm still a little bit curious about sure. this process. If you had a really big piece mm -hmm. of plastic, yes. would that shrink at a different rate because you have more substance or more material to work with? Or if you had a really well, small piece of plastic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Right. Now, I think that if we were able to apply the same temperature of heat as evenly as we applied this to a bigger piece of plastic, I think that yes, um, statistics, what's it? Um, oh, scale wise, right. it'd be the same amount of shrinkage that this is. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Experience. Super interesting. Yeah, I like, kind of like how that went all, that all went down. And the color stayed there too, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool as well. I think one of the things, even with using colored pencils, you might be a little bit concerned, like, oh, man, the color's going to go away. Yeah. We didn't use crayon, so we're not melting wax. Nope, nope. But we have some colored pencils, and that color stayed on there. In fact, exactly. I would even um, venture to say that that color is even more intense as it, it is, shrunk, yeah. right? Because everything's kind of coming together. Because the got crushed together, there so it's go. a more brilliant yellow. Right. Yeah, it looks no really good. Yeah, I think yeah, that's really good. Excellent well job. Okay, you ready to burn your fingers? <laughs> it should be okay. I'll try mine. Yes. Okay, it's still a little bit warm. But that's okay. We can probably do some measuring with it. All right, so go ahead and take those measurements again. Grab your, your ruler. And we want to see what's going on there. And then between now and our next time we come back and visit, then we'll make sure we do the math um, while they're doing some math back in the studio as well. So you're measuring from the top to the bottom of the plastic, right? Not just the picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, top to the bottom was four centimeters. Is that kind of what you're writing there? Okay. Yeah. So why? I went from 9.5 all the way to four and left to right. Seven and a half went all the way to three. Gotcha. So both of them cut in even more than in half. So maybe that 65% is right. Yeah, could be. Still a little bit more to do here. We want to do a couple more um, examples of this. We want to make sure we, that it's, we have some other things to look at. So our numbers aren't mm -hmm. just one example. We want multiple things, which is what we do Correct. in science and math both. We'll get it back to the studio, and we'll be back in a bit to see what the percentages are. All right. Well, we'll check in on those guys in a little bit. And uh, indeed, have some valid results, more than just one student doing it right there. All right, in studio we have Rashawn working on equations. 
continuing to do his homework, so you keep on working on that, because right now we're going to go to the phone. And Malachi, how are you this afternoon? I'm good. And you have an equation you're working on also, but you won't be able to see it, so we're just going to kind of talk you through it, correct? Yes. All right, read the math problem that you're working on to make sure we have the correct one up on the board. Two brackets, one minus three, parentheses, x plus two, parentheses, bracket, equals negative x. All right. Well, I think Cece's got that all ready for you. So as soon as you're ready, Malachi, the two of you are going to go ahead and work on this problem. Okay, great. So tell me the first step you think you should probably do in this problem. Um, I'm going to multiply the 3 and the x. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that up on the board. I know you can't see it, but we're going to go, we're going to do distribution. So that 3. So what are we going to end up with? I've got 1 and now what? 3x. Okay, is it plus 3x or minus 3x? Minus 3x. Okay, good. And then what else? I'm going to um, multiply the 3 times the 2. Okay, and what do I end up with? 6. Okay, I do get 6, but I had the, it was minus 3 or plus negative 3 out front. So what am I going to get now? Instead of just 6, mm -hmm. I'm going to have... Negative 6. Negative 6, good. Okay, so inside my brackets, I have 1 minus 3x minus 6. So let's keep working with our brackets. What can we do still inside of our brackets? Anything look like we could still work with it inside our brackets? 1 minus 3x minus 6? How about, um, go ahead, sorry. Uh, 1 minus 6. Okay, good. I have a positive 1 and I have minus 6 or negative 6. So what can I do with those? If we combine those like terms, I get what? Uh, <clears throat> 5. Negative 5. Negative 5 or minus 5. Good. Okay. So I have now 2 times the quantity or a bra open bracket, negative 3x minus 5. Close that bracket off is equal to negative 8 or negative x, excuse me. All right, so what's the next thing we're going to do? Can we can keep combining inside the brackets, those, that negative 3x and the negative 5? Um. Can, we combine the negative, can we combine a negative 3x and a negative 5? No. Okay, no, I can't. So now what do I do? Since our brackets are looking pretty done, what are we going to do next? Um, I'm going to... With the 2. Good. That's multiplication. So what am I going to end up with when I distribute my 2? Negative 4. Or, yeah, negative 4x and negative 4. Okay. Or, so negative 6. So negative 6. Okay, so the 2 times the negative 3x is going to give me? Negative 4x. You sure? 2 times 3 is what? Oh. Negative 6x. There you go. Nice. Okay, so negative 6x, and then we're going to multiply the 2 to the negative 5, which gives me? Uh, negative 10. Lovely. And that is, oops, I don't like the way that looks. Hold on. i got to fix it on my board. Okay, is equal to negative x. Okay, so now I have negative 6x on one side. I have negative x on the other side. What is our goal? To get rid of all the other numbers. Okay, so we're trying to get down to 1x. We're trying to get our x's kind of together, right? And how am I going to do that? I'm going to divide. Okay, so what are you thinking you would divide by? 10. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop with the 10 for just a moment. And let's just look at that negative 6x and the negative x. And let's figure out how to get all of our x's to one side. So that every single one of our x's, we don't have any x's on both sides. We want them onto one. So um, there's a couple things I can do. I can either eliminate or, or um, move our, uh, I hate to say move, that's not the word I want, um, my negative x, or I can work with my negative 6x. Which would you rather do? I'll work with negative 6x. Okay, so if I'm going to get rid of or eliminate the negative 6x, how would I do that? It's a negative 6x, so how do I do that? I, um, plus 6. Exactly right. I'm going to add 6x because that's going to get me to 0, right? Okay, what I do mm -hmm. to one side, I have to do to the other, correct? So what am I doing to the other side? Uh, I add 6. 
add 6x. Okay, so good. So you were right about that zero. So all I have left on, that, on the left-hand side is negative 10. And now I've got negative x plus 6x. And what does that give me? Negative 4. Um, what is in Well, think about it the other way, Malachi. What's 6x minus 1x? So just 6x minus 1x. 5x. There, there you go. go. So 5x. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I have negative 10 is equal to 5x. How do I get my x to just be 1x? Um, divide. I am going to divide because it's 5 times x, so I need to undo the multiplication. So I'm going to divide. So that leaves me with 5 divided by 5 is just x. And I'll scroll just a little bit. I'm going to have 5x divided by 5 gives me x. What's negative 10 divided by 5? Two, uh, negative 2. Negative 2. Nicely done. Negative nice. 2 for a great problem, Malachi. You've got yourself a pass to Holiday Lights at Com. So congratulations on that. And we'll have uh, Rashawn, you can check that problem to make sure that that is correctly. Right now, we're going to uh, check out a little bit about the state parks. Have you ever visited California's Redwood Forest? Explored the vast desert? Felt the power of the Pacific Ocean? These adventures and more can be yours to discover with the free California State Park Adventure Pass. Available to fourth graders and their families, this pass provides free access to select parks throughout California, waiving the day use and entry fees for a full year. With a variety of benefits, including access to museums, historic sites, and natural parks, adventure awaits you. Visit our website at parks.ca.gov slash adventure pass to get your free pass and learn more about this program. Let your adventures begin at California State Parks. Año Nuevo is one of the few places you can see elephant seals in the entire North America. You can be out here immersed in nature and surrounded by elephant seals. No other place can you get away with doing that. Año Nuevo State Park is just a magical place. There's a feeling that comes over you as you just sit out there and take it all in. The views, the wildlife, the cultural history, it's just phenomenal. This is one of the only rookeries where you're actually on ground level with the animals. You're, you're in their habitat. You're walking in amongst the harems, the females, and the bulls fighting. I think that experience is like something you might get on a safari. But when you come to the park, you're in for an adventure. Anya Nueva has so many cool things to check out. We have hawks and coyotes and bobcats Everything is here at the park. The park opens at 8.30 in the morning and closes at sunset. And our preserve, where the elephant seals are in, is open at the same time, but closes at 5 o'clock. You get to spend most of your day here at the park. It is a lot of fun. We always have elephant seals here on your Nuevo State Park. They definitely come in numbers here in the winter. You're going to see a fighting young pups from just being born that day. It is really the exciting part of the year. Our guided tour season starts the second weekend of December and goes until March. And you can either walk in for tickets or you can make reservations online. Our guided walks are led by docents. They are the actual tour guide for people when they go see the elephant seals. Sometimes we have to navigate you around the seals because it's wild out there. The seals will move right on your trail and you can't move a 5,000 pound seal. You have to move the trail around the seal. You definitely want to stay with your docent. They're going to keep you safe. When you enter the natural preserve, you're actually getting the visuals of these animals. Being at ground level with them, walking in and out of their habitat kind of gives you the perspective of what it might be like to be an elephant seal. They're like as big as SUVs. Imagine two SUV cars fighting each other. That's a little bit what it's like here at Año Nuevo. When visiting Año Nuevo, you definitely want to come prepared. We're a hiking park, so we recommend when people come, they bring layers in case it's cold out there. You want to make sure you dress for the weather. It can look sunny, but sometimes we get up on those dunes, it's quite windy. Make sure you have appropriate walking shoes. We get a lot of rain, and it, which is a great time to see elephant seals. But we get some pretty muddy trails in some muddy areas. We recommend when people come out in the winter that they bring gear that's okay to get a little wet, a little muddy. 
Don't forget to bring water and sunscreen with you as well. The guided walk to see the elephant seals runs two and a half hours long and it covers three miles. We label it as moderately strenuous. There's access to our beach along the way. Uh, you'll see our pond, you go through trees, through our staging area with exhibits, and on into the sand dunes, where you'll be able to actually leave our level trail and hit the dunes where there's sand everywhere you go. In a metropolitan area like San Francisco and the Bay Area, to be able to step away from all that and enter this reserve and kind of be immersed in that is something really unique and special. You absolutely have to make it out here. You can't believe how gorgeous it is. And a lot of great places on the Central Coast, especially our state parks, to see those elephant seals, especially this time of the year. We're going to head back downstairs right now and see how the uh, percentage of shrinky dinks is going with Curtis and the Bakersfield Museum of Art. All right, Scott. Hey, we're back. And boy, I tell you what, Mike, things sure to get busy down here. This is kind of exciting. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a new Christmas smell that I haven't had before, the smell of shrinky dinks. Kind of a neat deal. Um, hey, I want to go over a little bit of the math as they continue to shrink some of these things that are happening here. Um, let's say we have a picture here of a Christmas tree that I drew, right? And it's 10 centimeters tall, 6 centimeters wide, and that shrinks all the way down here to a really small version of the same thing, 4 centimeters tall, 2.5 centimeters wide. Okay, here's how the math works. We want to know the percent of shrink. You can do some estimation by fi figuring out that it's got to be more than 50% because this 10 went down to 4. 5 would be half, 4 is even less, so it's going to shrink more than 50%. Here's how it works. Take your original number, subtract the new number, and that number on top is six. Divide that by the original number, and that gives you the percentage of shrink. Same thing happens over here with the width, right? Original number, new number, we subtract that out, divide it by the original, and we're pretty darn close. Now, it's not always gonna shrink exactly to the number, but you can see this is kind of an example about what's happening, and it makes sense with our picture because the estimation would be more than 50%. So as we look at some more things, it still continues to amaze me that as these things shrink, they look like they're going to shrivel up into a little ball of plastic, but they continue to go flat. And these are pr some pretty amazing pictures that have gone on. Curtis, as you continue to shrink these, tell us a little bit about more about what's happening at the Museum of Art yeah, next month or two. Absolutely. So we do have a couple more things uh, going on at the museum before the year's end. Uh, coming up this Saturday, uh, we have the evening with the artist with Brian Ida. I'm actually wearing a shirt with one of his fantastic pieces on it, <laughs> the Buck Y shirt, available at the Bakersfield Museum of Art as well as our website. Nice. Um, we also have, uh, coming up for uh, art education, we have winter workshops coming up. So if you're looking for something for uh, the little ones to do during their winter break, then the work, uh, winter workshops registration is up on our website, bmoa.org. And uh, yeah, then we'll be rounding out the, um, the end of the year just with being open, our regular business hours, Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Good deal. Well, we mm -hmm. always appreciate having you here because we want to make sure people know math just doesn't happen in the classroom. Absolutely. It happens all over the place, mm -hmm. even happens in art. And I love this example of being able to see you see manipulatives, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe even, who knows, maybe even a teacher will pick up this activity up sometime. A uh, little bit more math to do back in the studio, and we'll look forward to the next time we get to chat with the folks at the Bakersfield Museum of Art. Thanks thank for being here. Thank you so here. much. Yep. Have a good one. You too. <laughs> All right, thanks for that, Scott, and also thank you to Curtis and everybody at the Bakersfield Museum of Art for some of the great activities that we've done so far this year. As a reminder, you can phone in tomorrow, Wednesday, and we will also be giving away Holiday Lights at Com as well as next week. And next week is the last week for live broadcasts for Do the Math this season. In studio, we had Rashawn, a sixth grade student from Reagan. How do you feel about those uh, equations today? Good. Yeah? You feel pretty comfortable with those now? Mm -hmm. You seem like you did pretty well with them. Yeah. Do you like going through the process of checking the answer? Yeah. Yeah, I would say, yeah, kind of like, yeah, yeah. you kind of got to do it or whatever, right? So anyway, did you learn a little something today? Yeah. Good. Did you have some fun today? Definitely. That's the part, most important part right there. You know what? We got a little treat right here, and we just want to send out a special shout-out to uh, Miriam over at Radio Sandwich. Excellent, because she helps us with our culinary calculations, and they have some of the most delicious cookies over there. Dark chocolate, pistachios, salt, lovely goodness in every bite. Can't thank Miriam enough. Happy holidays to you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, until we meet again, continue to do the math.
Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.